Welcome to the webcast. Today's session is about optimizing trade promotions with machine learning and analytics. My name is Vidya Salvaraj. I've been a data and analytics consultant with Tharagood for about nine years now. I'm based out of the London office. So for those of you who don't know Tharagood, we're an independent global professional services firm specializing in data engineering, data science, and data visualization. We're a global company with offices in Boston, Philadelphia, London, Bangalore in India, Singapore, and Sao Paulo in Brazil. All our consultants are recruited and trained in the same way to develop a unique mix of skills, blending business understanding with strong technical aptitude and a deep understanding of analytical tools. We offer a full range of services, including strategy and roadmaps, requirements, design, implementation, and training and support. As I've mentioned, we're an independent firm. We don't work with one specific technology. Instead, we partner with a wide array of technology firms in the analytics and business intelligence space. As you can see, we're a standing Microsoft partner for 20 years. We also partner with some of the other leading firms like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Databricks, Anaplan, etc. In today's session, I will be covering an overview of the TPA tool. So this trade promotion analytics tool is used for optimizing trade promotions, and I've been part of the team that delivered the solution. I'll be giving an overview of what the tool is about, how it can be used, and what are the benefits you get out of this tool. So what is TPA? TPA stands for Trade Promotion Analytics Tool. It is a tool used to optimize your promotional spend and address business questions across markets. So the tool has been designed such that it can address some of the important business questions that are required across multiple markets. This tool was rolled out for many huge global markets and it was customized for each market to suit their business questions. So let's take a quick look at the different activities that are involved in building the tool in a sequence. This data ingestion involved and a common data model is built. We bring together granular data from different levels, promotional events, primary sales, mapping information, and financials data is brought together. We then blend the data required at the right levels and aggregate it to give us the insights at the right aggregation. We also have in-house analytics algorithms. Some of them are proprietary built for analyzing the data. And finally, it is reported using a dashboard interface. So when we talk about analytics algorithms, we have baseline cannibalization and price elasticity. We also codify market nuances when we work on these algorithms. Finally, we identify and report the required KPIs. So when we say this tool is customized based on the business questions that it's supposed to answer, let's see what the business questions it's trying to answer. What is the overall result of promotions? How has the promotion forecast changed over time? How have the promotional events delivered against planned forecast? Is the promotional strategy driving profit? What are the mechanics that are consistently profitable? What are the growing business? Are we growing business faster or slower versus the investment? And what events drove market share and or category sales? I think these are some of the common business questions that anyone looking at promotional spend will have. The tool has a set of dashboards that will help you get deeper insights into answering some of these questions. With that, I think taking the right action will help you lead your business forward in the right direction. Let's look at a quick evolution of the tool. So what we're talking about today, the trade promotion analytics tool, once started as a planning tool, it was a trade fund management solution across promotion and planning lifecycle. And then it became a post-event evaluation tool, a tool which was used to evaluate the promotion cycles once they are actually deployed in the market. The current version of tool is an advanced analytics tool that unlocks market data insights powered by a built-in baseline with cannibalization engine and a future scenario even planning module. What we intend this tool to be in its final version, which will be the next release, is a prescriptive analytics optimization tool, which is guided by the past results. So it will be fully equipped to deliver optimized promotion calendar recommendations. So what started off as a simple fund management tool has seen through the entire cycle and will evolve into a final recommendation tool. Now that we have an idea of what 
trade promotion analytics tool is about let's look at the technical architecture of this tool along with some of the data sets involved so the data sources that it loads data from has data in different formats some of them are structured data some of them from sap csv files text based files all of these structured data sets are loaded using data pipelines as a first step they're loaded into our data storage layer which is Azure Data Lake Storage. So this solution is completely built on Microsoft Azure platform. We load a copy of the data from the structured source data into raw data dumps. They are then picked up by Databricks. Some of our data processing techniques are applied and data pipelines are then used to move these across to the output layer, which is the cleansed and transformed data layer, again, sitting within the data lake storage. The advantage of having all of this, the source and the output data in data lake storage is to have a go-to data platform where you can just tap into any process data set and even perform uh, data science analysis if you intend to. Finally, we have additional data pipelines that move the data from the storage layer into the semantic layer. The semantic layer used for this tool is a SQL data warehouse due to the large volumes of data. You could also look to use a SQL database if required. And finally, the data is then picked up from the SQL data warehouse and Power BI is deployed to report the data in the form of dashboards, front-end dashboards. A quick look at some of the data sets that reported in TPA. Let's start off with the sales data. So it includes data from primary sales, secondary sales, and tertiary sales, uh, like the electronic point of sales data. This promotions data, which is the main data set that we use, it includes promotional and marketing event calendars, some of the baselines and competitor promotional data, strategy and guidance. It includes promotional guidelines, competitor benchmarks, cannibalization parameters. There's dimensional master data against which these data sets are reported, which include product, customer, regional data across multiple granularities aggregated at different levels of hierarchy. We also have financial data like the product price information, target information, and other list price. And finally, some trade activities data set, which includes in-store information like the promotional visibility or display. This section will cover some of the analytical solution components. So there are four main kinds of analysis that you can do with this tool. That's how the user journey has been designed. The performance assessment is the most important set of dashboards that this tool has. It understands past results and the landscape that the brands and events are operating in, followed by strategy assessment. It helps review executional excellence of past execution and identify improvement areas. We have post-promotion assessment, which helps us understand results and impact of past promotional events relative to forecasted plan. And finally, it allows us to look at pre-promotion assessment to help get insights on promo configuration to provide best outcomes. So let's look at each of this in a bit more detail. The tool is built as a suite of dashboards and each of these verticals have a bunch of dashboards that report key KPIs. So if we take performance assessment, it provides visibility to overall business trend. It helps us understand how our business performs across the specific landscape, it helps us report the investment, how it's driving incremental growth across different portfolios. It helps us identify the business growth contributors. We can also analyze our profit and loss across channels and customers, and in turn, understand the price behavior within and across categories. The next one is the strategy assessment. So the main aim of this is to understand how our discount strategies, promotion strategies, and the frequency of the promotional events that we run perform in the market. So this helps us check how in-market execution fares against promotion guidelines. Certain companies uh, come up with promotion guidelines on a yearly fashion, and we keep a tab of how the performance is. We can also understand where the execution exceeds guidelines, and if there are any outliers, they can be captured as well across the trade channels. We can provide visibility to promotion components, including the frequency and volume sold, and the different strategies that have been employed throughout the phase of 
the promotion cycle can be tracked and assessed. Post-promotion assessment is the next key vertical in the four pillars. So post-promotion assessment mainly aims at doing a plan versus actuals comparison. So it helps you check your actual retailer sales versus the planned numbers across different plan versions. You can do a RAD status assessment and report them across different executed events. You can see if the events have delivered against the event targets agreed. There are scorecards, there are dashboards that have event level scorecards that help you gauge the impact that they have on market share and sales. And you can also understand how promotions correlate to business performance. Finally, looking at pre-promotion assessment. There are certain promotional events that might have been very successful in the past. So there is a natural inclination to repeat some of those events in a timely fashion to gain best benefits out of it. This particular area helps you assess whether how profitable will that event be if it is deployed at a particular point in time in future. It also helps you analyze if the expected results will be successful. It gives you visibility to price elasticities and brand interaction. It helps you assess promotional plans and changes to total forecast across different versions that have been recorded. And finally, it gives you a good view of the potential uplift for certain promotion type configuration. Let us now look at some of the key concepts in TPA implemented using machine learning algorithms. Price elasticity measures how sensitive the demand of your product is to changes in price. It is calculated as percentage change in volume of the product divided by the percentage change in price of the same product. We say a product is price inelastic when an increase in price causes a smaller percentage fall in demand. The graph that indicates a 40% increase in price of a product has led to a 10% fall in its demand. A product is said to be price elastic when an increase in price causes a bigger percentage fall in its demand. The graph on the right indicates an elastic demand where a 20% price change of a product has led to a 50% fall in its demand. In TPA, there are two different price elasticity measures calculated. The self price elasticity referred to in the previous slide indicates the price elasticity for the same product, whereas cross price elasticity indicates this metric calculated across different interacting product groups. For example, interaction between shampoo and conditioners. So the formula applied here is percentage change in volume of product X divided by the percentage change in price of product Y. The graph on the right shows how a small rise in price of product X causes a large rise in demand for product Y. Let's take a quick look at the sequence of steps followed to calculate price elasticity. As a first step, the electronic point of sale data is loaded. Business rules are applied to determine the parameters that are not expected to interact with each other. For example, change in price of liquid detergents does not impact body wash products. Product groups are formed to get interacting schools together. Our shampoos and conditioners could be part of the same product group. Once the groups are created, the price elasticity algorithm is modeled. To get more definitive results, the algorithm uses a customized version of principal component analysis technique in the model. The next key concept that we will be covering is cannibalization. Cannibalization is the loss in sales caused by a company's introduction of a new product that displaces one of its own older products. There are two ways in which cannibalization can occur in a market. It can occur unintentionally when a new product is introduced and is similar to an existing product drawing customers away from the existing product. Some companies use uh, cannibalization as a deliberate strategy to blow out underperforming brands within their organization. So if you have a certain brand that is underperforming, you can introduce a new range of products that outperforms the old one. CPA implementation, we derive cannibalization value from price elasticity, and this is being calculated at a promoted product group level. Uh, let's look at an example to understand how cannibalization algorithm is implemented in TPA. We have two promoted product groups, A and B, and here promoted product group A cannibalizes product group B by 
10 pounds. So A happens to be the impacting product group where B is the impacted product group. If we assume that the total sales of product group B is 50, which can be allocated across three different SKUs that belong to the product group. We've allocated 25 to SKU B1, 15 to B2, and 10 to B3. So how are we going to split out the 10 pound cannibalization that a has caused impact on. We will use the formula such that 5 of the 10 total cannibalization impact is assigned to SKU B1, 3 pounds gets assigned to B2, and 2 of which is assigned to B3. So cannibalization can be derived when cross-product price elasticity exists between two products, where price change in one product leads to a volume change in the other. There are specific MI algorithms built in that will help you uh, predict such cannibalization effects in the market. So we've looked at the TPA tool, different analysis that it can perform and what sort of predictions that it can do as well. With this context, let's understand the business value that this tool can bring in. Consumer goods companies spend up to 20% of their revenue on trade promotions every year. So increasing the effectiveness of such promotion helps the company retain more profit. Hence, TPA tool will help you optimize trade spend. It can give you improved business strategies. It will help you save time spent on analysis. It can drive effective leadership decisions, and it can also increase your return on investment. So that's all we had for today. Thank you and hope to speak to you soon.